Good morning, everyone. Good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. I want to welcome you to our second Global Nomads Group and Students Rebuild live stream webcast. Today, we are continuing our conversation about the ocean in support of the Ocean Challenge this year, where we're spreading awareness about the health of the ocean and activating young people everywhere to take action to help the ocean remain healthy and a vital part of our lives. Today, specifically, we're gonna talk a little bit more about the ocean health as it relates to coral reef and how the coral reef plays a role in the ocean and how it plays a role in our lives. So we're just gonna explore. Um, my name is Afia and I am the program manager here at Global Nomads Group. And it is my honor to be here facilitating our conversation today. I want to welcome everyone in the chat room. Thank you for joining. Thank you for watching. Um, feel free to introduce yourselves and interact in the chat room by sharing your stories or asking questions to the on-screen students. We will go along through our conversation and I hope to include some of your questions and I hope that you also have a riveting conversation in your chat room. Today we are joined from students in Luthera, Bahamas, in Wichita, Kansas, and in Levine, Arizona. And so we're gonna get started and have everyone introduce themselves so that we know who we are speaking with. So our young people um, on screen, if you will please introduce yourselves we will start in the Bahamas, then we'll go to Arizona, and we'll end in Kansas. And tell us your name, your school, and a fun fact about where you live. So again, we're gonna start in the Bahamas. And remember to speak so we can all hear you. Bahamas, do you want to introduce yourselves? Okay, maybe we'll come back to them. Do you want to introduce yourselves, Arizona? My name is Galen, I'm a sophomore, and then I'm with Adriana, Brian, and Angel. And we in Arizona is pretty dry, we're not really near um an ocean so we don't have much experience every day constantly about an ocean so it's cool to be here thank you thank you Jayla. now we'll go to kansas and have you introduce yourself hi i'm dora um this is hannah emily and jared and we're from north high um and a fun fact about our school is as our school is actually right on the little arkansas river so we were able to like go out and learn about like that kind of like aquatic life, I guess, even though we aren't like directly by an ocean here in Kansas. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Let's try the Bahamas again. Bahamas, would you like to introduce yourselves? Yeah. <laughs> Are you ready, Bahamas, to share the audience? If you're speaking, we can't really hear you. Give you another try. Bahamas, can you hear me okay? You want to introduce yourselves? I think they may be having some sound trouble, guys. So we're going to keep going. Hopefully, they pop in. But these are young people on the island of the Bahamas. They are at North Luthera High School, and they are participating in the Ocean Challenge as well. And some of their art um, you can see actually hanging behind them uh, in their classroom that they're submitting to the Ocean Challenge. So I just shared a quick fun fact. Um, okay, so we're going to continue our conversation. 
Um, and the way we're going to start today is with some storytelling. And we like to hear stories from some of our young people about their experience with a body of water or an experience at the beach, at the lake, at the ocean that they would like to share with us. And so we'll start in um, Kansas and then we'll jump to Arizona. We'll come back to the Bahamas to hear about their stories. <laughs> um, well, a body of water that was like important to me was the ocean. The first time I saw it um, a few years ago, we went to Florida and I remember like I saw the ocean and walked out on the beach and I was like so excited to be there because I'd never seen it before. And it was like almost nighttime was setting. And I was just like, I love the ocean so much. And it was like an incredible experience. And then I just wanted to learn more and more about it after that. And that's when I discovered I wanted to be a marine biologist. Thank you. Anybody else there that want to share a story? Gary, you don't want to tell me your story? No, sure. <laughs> Ever since I was I was really young, my family and I, we've all made a tradition of going to a lake a state or so away, and we we just go there, and our family gathers from all around the country, and we just have a good time for about a week there, out of the summer. And awesome. So that's a big part of life. Yeah, that's awesome. So it sounds like water is a part of your lives, even though you're not directly um, at the ocean. So that's good. Um, let's go to Arizona. Let's see. You guys have some cool stories I know to tell us. Two years ago, we went to a summer vacation in Cancun. We went snorkeling, and like the water was shallow. I seen like a lot of fishes. And it looked like just underwater plants and rocks. Was that your first time seeing some of that? Yeah, that was my first time. Yeah, that's really cool. I know we've got another cool story there. You want to share your story? Yeah. Yes. So it was probably my, uh, my fourth time going to California. And we went to Santa Monica Beach. And then we went. We, mm, so we were just hanging out at the beach like a normal day playing in the water. It was very cold, like always. And then the funny thing is, is that the waves were getting bigger and bigger and we didn't know why. And then all of a sudden we saw a whale appear out of the water. And then it was, it was, it was just for like maybe three minutes because it came up out of the water, it floated a little bit, then it let his water out of the blowhole and then just dip right back in. Yeah, but that was pretty cool. I know I've never seen a whale. Has anybody else seen a whale up close like that? No, me either. Maybe in the Bahamas they have. Let's see if their audio is working a little better now. Um, Bahamas, do you want to share some of your stories about the ocean? If you've seen a whale. Oh no, we're still having trouble. Will you, will you tell us your story? Afia, I noticed we've been unmuted, but we can't hear you. We can only hear Arizona. Wow. Okay. Let's see Arizona. Is any better, guys? Any better, huh? Okay. Okay, let's try again. I heard you then. Okay, I'm just so sorry that we're having a little trouble with our audio connection in the Bahamas. We're gonna try and problem solve on the back end. Thank you all for watching for being patient with us. Um, technology can be a bit tricky as we all know. Um, so we're gonna continue our conversation as we try and problem solve to loop the Bahamas back into our conversation. Um, 
as we move ahead, we've talked a little bit about the ocean or the water that has created a special experience in our lives. Um, so now my question is, why is it important to know about the ocean? Um, what, are, what are some of the things that you've learned in after falling in love or having an experience with the ocean that um, helps you understand the value of it in your life? Um, we can start anywhere or I can call on somebody. Yeah, go ahead. You can go, Dora. Did you have something this year? No? Okay. We'll go to Arizona. Um, you, what are some things, some reasons that it's important for us to maintain our ocean health? Or like what, after these cool experiences that you've had, um, what are some, some reasons that we should care about this? Well, I think it's important because... Um, go ahead, Jamie. I just think it's important because most of the earth is ocean and it's it, you just got and there's just a lot of unknown life in the water and it's just cool that there's still many, a lot of stuff that hasn't been discovered yet and without the ocean that there, there pretty much wouldn't be any water yeah it affects us everywhere right even when we're not um, on the coast or not on an island. I agree. Anybody else? Um, what about the coral reef? I and mean, we are specifically talking about the coral reef. And so do you guys know some of the ways that the coral plays a role in the in the ocean? And we'll go back to Kansas and see what you guys have to say. Um. The coral reef plays like a big role in the ocean because it provides a home for like many, many animals. Some animals are only found on the coral reef. And without the coral reefs, those animals like would have a home and would have to go somewhere else. And it might like disrupt that ecosystem. And it could cause a lot of issues. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. You're absolutely correct. Um, and so, as we talk, we have like some ocean facts or some coral reef facts over here. But I'm just curious to know what you guys think is the role that coral reef plays in your life. Have you thought about like what coral does for human beings? Um, I know in the Bahamas, they um, have an experience there that might be different than in our states. But we are all affected, right, by the ocean and the coral reef. So, what are some things I'll stay with you guys in? in Kansas, what are some ways that coral reef benefits human beings? Um, my name is Hannah. Um, coral reef is like food sources throughout the world, just not like island and everything. So like we get a lot of our seafood from coral reefs and everything like that. Thank you. Yeah, so we fish. How many of us eat seafood? Any type of seafood or sushi, right? Me, I do. Um, so the coral reef provides a home for a lot of the fish and it also helps keep the ocean healthy, right? And so without the coral reef, then our fish would be less um, viable as meals for us. Um, are there some other ways that, like, so we're talking about fish, for example. Um, fish are also a source of revenue for different communities. And so can we, any thoughts about um, the effect of, like, being able to even buy and sell fish and, and how that affects our economy? Without, like, a lot of, like, fish from the coral reefs or anything, like, all the, like, fisheries and, like, fish and stuff might not be able to catch as much fish. So like the prices of fish would go up and like it'll cause it to become like it would just have a really bad effect on our economy because it would be really hard to like buy it and then people would probably get upset yeah absolutely absolutely um i know we were talking earlier today with um emily uh i think yeah i think emily you were telling me about something that you were doing when you went up for a fourth of july you want to tell us that story do I tell the bad part too? <laughs> okay, so basically, um, in my family, we have a tradition to go to Cheney Lake, which is in Kansas. Um, 
and we basically go on jet skis. But this one time I was with my uncle and we kind of just like ran over a log and the jet ski like tipped over and we almost drowned. <laughs> it's a dangerous experience, right? And so yeah, <laughs> you're live. Um, I bring that up because recreation is one of the things that is noted as something that affects the ocean and the coral reef. Maybe not specifically Emily's like jet ski experience that time but we know that coral has to live in shallow spaces that can receive light, right? And so when we are like walking on the shallow areas or boating or anchoring, then we have the potential to affect the life of the coral reef based on like what our habits might be, right? Hello? Hey, Bahama. Hello? Hi. There. So welcome back. What we're talking about right now, if you want to jump in the conversation, is about the role that coral reef plays in our lives as human beings. And you guys live on an island. Can you talk about why coral is important for you on an island? Our country, our country is very small. Um, corals stop erosion. Corals are wave breakers, and they help us in hurricanes. Yeah, they protect. They are protecting the island. What else? What other ways are coral reefs benefiting you guys in the house? Tourism is our number one industry in the Bahamas. Um, Sometimes when our most tourist attraction is the water and the sun and our climate. And sometimes sports fishing, they want to go down the water and take pictures with the corals, but sometimes when they climb up, they call them to die. Absolutely. Such a valid point. So Therese was just telling us that tourism is the highest attractive, I mean the highest grossing income attraction in the Bahamas. And so the, the main draw is the ocean and the beautiful water and the beautiful coral. And because their country relies on tourism, so many of us, we think of tourism as our own vacation, but we might not talk about how our, our dollars might benefit a different community. And in this case, travel dollars benefit the Bahamas. So without healthy ocean, the draw to the Bahamas would not be the same and it would affect their economy and the ability for their families to um, have happy, healthy lives. Thank you so much. That's a great, um, that's a great segue. And so are there any other things that we're thinking about? Like we didn't really use pollution, right? How many of us use plastic on a daily basis? Even though when we try not to use as much plastic, you know, and it's really hard, but even the plastic, um, because it doesn't break down, it's getting into our waterways. So even for, some of us in Arizona or some of us in Kansas, even the plastic that we use when it's thrown away, right? It makes its way to the ocean. And what's the closest body of water to you guys in Kansas? A river. Oh, oh. oh. oh my gosh. <laughs> the little Ar the little Arkansas River right next to our school You guys know do you know how the Arkansas River makes its way into the ocean at all? Other to bigger rivers that eventually lead to the ocean, right? So all that to say that even though you're not directly at the ocean, the things that you're doing are connected to the ocean, right? And it's very it's something for us all to be aware of because no matter where we are, we are taking a role and affecting these things that equally affect and benefit our lives. Um, Air quality is another thing that we didn't talk about, but air quality is something else. The coral reef um, works with carbon dioxide in the water and it helps to maintain those levels for us. And so that's something I think nobody thinks about on a daily basis, but how bad our air would become if we had no coral reef, right? That's tricky. So now that we're talking about these, now that we're talking about these issues that are keeping it, um, 
how much like what like what are things that you do in your daily life that talk about these things that would affect what would be affected in your life if we had no more healthy oceans or healthy coral reefs? Like based on wherever you are, what are some things that might change in your life if the coral are no longer healthy? Let's see, why don't we start in Arizona? You don't get a lot of water. No, you don't get a lot of water, but what would be affected then if the, despite where your location is? I can't hear you, Brian. The temperature Temperature would change. Yeah. What else? What else do you think would be affected, or what parts of your life, like what stories in your lives, would change if if the coral reef went away? Less aquatic animals. Less. Yeah. Definitely. Right. The whales that we think are so beautiful, they they might no longer be around. Yeah. What else? The Bahamas. Let's see. What do you guys think? What um what stories would change about your lives there in the Bahamas if the coral reef went away? Yeah, what if the corals were destroyed, that would cause like it's like like if there's like um a storm or whatever. Like the water will come on land because there's no power to pull it back, and like that cause tsunamis. Absolutely, and those would destroy your community, right? Yeah. What else? What else in the Bahamas might be affected um, if there are no coral? No fish. The yes. corals yeah. die, they are home for fishes, and like if fish, the fishes don't have any home, still the die. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they will have no more homes for the fish that we like to eat. And so, there, um, does anybody in the Bahamas, do any of your families fish? Or do you, any of you dive? I think we have some divers in the group, correct? My granddad is a diver. My stepdad is a diver. He brings a lot of fish inside out from the eight type of fish. Yeah. And so what's the experience like when you're when you're diving? And um, what would that experience be like with the coral? Can you repeat the question? Yeah, I was just wondering the story, a little more of the story about your diving experience and how you think that might change um, if there was no more pool. Um, diving, you get to meet a lot of fishes under the water. You can dive where you can, you scared of nothing under the water. Because sometimes under the water you meet scary stuff. If you can't panic or get scared. Okay. Yeah. But when I was walking, I said, I went under the water. I didn't even know about cars. cars. Uh, I actually recorded and it stick me, but it, it actually hurt, but I never know it, it stinks. Coral sting. But yeah. They're very dangerous. I didn't know the. Some of them, some of them not. What, what, what is that, a protective measure, you think, that the, the coral is protecting itself from people touching it? Yes, yes ma'am, yes ma'am. Yeah, and so you guys have a lot of tourists in Thomas, and so is that an issue there, that people are touching the coral reef in your, in your community? Not, not, not really. Well, that's good if people aren't coming and touching the coral reef because I know that that's another way that the coral can become unhealthy is that people are touching it um, or interacting with it in ways that are not that are not okay. There was um, 
you guys were telling me in the Bahamas about an experience of something that you do with the whales. And I just thought that would be an interesting story to share too, because you've got somebody who's seen a whale and this is something that also affects your economy, right? Does somebody want to tell us about what happens with um, the whales and what you pick up on the beach and what you're able to do with it? And, uh, we walk across, uh, we walk to the beach, that's uh, called Amagras, the sand of the ocean. We use our uh, Amagras to uh, make the gold of the yeah, you use the ambulance to make perfume. It works a lot of money. It works a lot of money. Depends on what size it is to make larger than. Yeah. But it's not easy to find on a beach. It's not very easy to find. You find it on the beach. Some, I, found, I found some the other day, but I couldn't keep them inside the house because they are very stiff. We gotta keep them outside because I wrap it around with some plastic. But it was it, but flies still coming out. It's very stink. Yeah, and so do you, do you know what to do with it after you've gotten it? Can you repeat the question? I feel yeah, like what there. do you know? Can you tell us about what you do with it after you pick it up? Um, but if you guys weren't able to hear, I just want to repeat a little bit of what they just shared in the Bahamas. Um, where they live sometimes washes up on the on their beach is something called ambergris. And if you look it up, it will sound very gross, but it is like whale puke and it's very smelly, but it's very expensive. It's a, a high commodity and it helps um, a lot of our perfumes. And so I asked them that story because, or asked them to share that story with you because um, these are other things that we might not think about on our day to day about how a healthy ocean can affect our daily lives. And even down to the fragrances that we wear, right? the um, ocean has an effect on that and an unhealthy ocean would affect the ability to make these products that we use. Are there any other things, products or, or items that come from the ocean or come from the coral reef that we're able to benefit from as humans? Okay, so basically like ne uh, jewelry, such as like necklace shells or pearls that could be in the, well, you know those like, um, those beaded bracelets that come from the ocean? What's it called? There's like beaded bracelets and it's like made up of like stuff in the ocean and it's to like help take care of the ocean. And if people buy it, like, it gives more money to help save, like, and clean up the ocean. Okay, so jewelry. That's, that's awesome. So now I'm going to punt it to our young people in the Bahamas and ask them, have any of you guys made jewelry or make things out of what you find um, that has come up from the ocean or from the coral reef? Is there anything that you do artsy there? My parents use, well, when they go on the beach, they find um, sand dollars in the ocean because uh, they wash up on the beach. I mean, carols, I we use them for jewelry as well. Um, my mother, she paints on them, she writes, she writes on them, and you know, she sings. Yeah. Yeah. So making things off the beach. You said jewelry, right? Uh, 
let's see. Let's also we're gonna check in with our chat room and see what things that they have to contribute. What do they benefit from, or how do they utilize the ocean, or um, what comes to mind when we think about how the ocean, ocean or coral reef contributes to our daily lives. And I know as we wait for some chat room responses, I saw Brian, I saw you may have had something that you wanted to share. They still have it. Go ahead. Yeah. You said, did they have projects? Yeah, projects, like a science project or something. Great question. How much? Oh no, they just went away. Well, I do, I do know that they, uh, some of them are divers, and um, I don't know, I don't think they do it with their school, but they go out on their own, and they take the boat out, and they dive, and they look at the coral, and they collect fish for the families, and sometimes for markets um, in their community. We'll see if we get them back. Well, we have a question. Um, as we talk about these issues that are facing the ocean, somebody in our chat room is wondering, what, um, if someone wanted to save the ocean, what advice would you give them? And so I know you guys are like in your science classes and your conservation club. So we'll start here with you guys in Arizona. Um, but what is some advice that you would give to someone who was looking to do something to benefit the ocean from wherever they are? Yeah, we do need a lot of people, right? But that's so important that just thinking about what we do individually and what we can do where we can reach. So like picking up trash, being sure we throw our stuff in the proper bins, right? When we're on the beach, not walking over the garbage that we find, maybe grabbing it and tossing it before it makes it into the ocean. I think that's, say that again, Jenny. Um, yeah, what about you guys in Kansas? What would you say? What are some tips that you share with your community? Um, I'm Hannah and from Kansas, like we can recycle and like pick up trash and clean up our like rivers that like, go to the ocean and just really take care of the rivers and like, our environment and everything like that. I think the best thing we can do is really raise awareness. Like we can't do anything firsthand, like directly for the ocean, but uh, like with the more people that understand how, like the little things we can do, like just clean up the environment and where we are can affect what's going on over there. It will help a lot. Yeah. So we, can, we can like tell people in Kansas about like effects we can have on the ocean by this like littering or something and try and get others here to stop it because a lot of people here are like we're in the middle of the country. We don't have an effect on the ocean, but we like really do because everyone like thinks connected to the ocean. Absolutely. The awareness is very key. Uh, whether they're close to it or not close to it, people don't always know. And so I agree that spreading that awareness is key. I'm going to repeat your question. Or Brian, do you want to repeat your question to the Bahamas group now that we have them here? Bahamas, um, Brian in Arizona had a question for you. If you couldn't hear, he was asking, do you guys do any science projects? So what type of science projects do you do that are related to the ocean and coral reef? You guys aren't doing projects with the ocean? Oh. 
giving you. Okay, what's the question? Are we doing any projects about the ocean? Yeah, and is in your science classes or even just at home, are there projects or things that you do to learn more about the ocean since it's so close? Okay, so your art project. <laughs> Yeah. So they do art projects, and I know that this one that they're sharing is related to an ocean challenge where we're inviting people all over the world to um, look at sea creatures and dive into more information and awarenesses, and then make a piece of art that represents what they've learned, what they've seen, what they have in their communities, and send it in. Um, and just like with the making of the plastic bracelets, we do this to raise awareness and to raise money for protecting our oceans um, for long-term health. It's wonderful. So as we talk about these solutions and using art and um, thinking about how the coral reef can benefit us, um, before we wrap up, we're going to talk a little bit about what's next. So we've talked about a lot of facts and a lot of realities that the ocean plays a significant role and the coral reef plays a significant role in our lives from protecting our land um, from storms and hurricanes to providing air quality. Um, something we didn't mention was that coral reef is now being used to create medicines for some of the very advanced diseases that we have, um, which is something I didn't know. I don't know if you guys knew that the coral is now being used um, to help our medicine. And so because we now know, we know how important all of this is in our lives. My question for you is, how do we take what we've talked about today and invite more people to join and care about the ocean? Like, what about today has inspired you? What have you learned and from hearing each other's stories that um, you want to take further? Arizona, I'll start with you because you have you big on my screen right now. Where do we go from here? We can just spread the word because just letting your ideas out there or just letting your questions out there can, be, can give you a better experience on just not being afraid to ask questions to the right people and you can probably get the right answer or pretty um, a good estimation or prediction on what what your question is. Hmm. Good one. Adriana, what do you think? Like what what has inspired you in this conversation today? To be aware, do you feel like you learned some things today that you didn't know about coral already? That's awesome. That's awesome. Say that. Say that again, Brian. You didn't know that, huh? Right. I think that's a pretty cool fact too. So where do we go from here, Kansas? What what do you think is you know, like being inspired about this? What do we do? Um, how do we get our friends and family involved? I think we just need to like continue like raising awareness like about the coral reefs in the ocean and like talk about talk to people about how like important it is that we like help the oceans and like we continue to recycle and like use less plastic and stuff and like try to help our like rivers and stuff here. And do. We just need to come here and explain how like, important it is that even though we're in Kansas that we help the oceans. Absolutely. Um, what do you think people might need to hear to be inspired? Because I think everything you ever said is absolutely correct. But we know, right, that either where we live or people have a lot of things to care about, how, like, what do we think people need to hear to actually be inspired to take action? What do you say, Emily? Personal connection? I feel like if we tell people we need to preserve life because, like, as the years go by, it's like starting to degrade and, like, everything is starting to go extinct. I feel like if we tell people if we save the earth now, we could like do better later instead of like going down the road now. Okay. I, also, I also think we need to like explain to people, like show them pictures or like try and help people get to the ocean maybe so they can like explain 
so they can like explain like the beauty of the ocean and the coral reefs. So maybe once they actually like see it, they'll be like, wow, like this is dying. We need to like save it and like help out. Instead of just seeing pictures and hearing about it, they need to like understand fully like what's going on and that they need to help. Right. So we need to fly everybody around the world, right? To the Bahamas, <laughs> the Great <laughs> Reef and drop them. I agree, I'm on board. I'll sign up for that trip. Um, but I agree that the personal connection and that um, helping make it real for people is very important to help them understand. So in the spreading of awareness, it's part of it is how does this affect this individual person? Um, so for the seafood lover, there is an effect. For the jewelry lover, there's an effect. For the perfume lover, there's an effect. For the person who wants to visit the Bahamas every year, um, there's an effect that the ocean plays on our life, right? So Bahamas, now that we got you back, I hope you can hear me. What we're talking about is what's next and where do we go from here? So as people who live on an island that depends on the ocean, what do you think people need to hear to be inspired to take action? Um. What I say we could do is we could slow down on dredging because I know that if you dredge a lot, it will like clog the ports on the coral reefs. And some people, when they fish, they would um um put bleach in the water to like draw the fishes away from the coral to catch them and then affect the corals. Wow. So I think you said some very valuable things. We have to address our actions. We have some actions that are happening in our waterways that we need people to stop, right? That's a that's a very good contribution. I think you guys told me once before about dynamite fishing. Do you want to share what dynamite fishing is really quickly before we wrap up? Um, sometimes um, when fish are hard to get, they use dynamites to like scare them out. That's uh, yeah, the food. So. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, oh, I was like, if you explore that, I will cause the sand to go off and stuff, and that for the sun. It was the of the coral reefs. Yeah, I think were you talking about the, the blocking of the sun from reaching the coral reef? Which is very important. I think that's what she said, something about blocking the access. And so sunlight is very important to the ocean and to the coral reef. And so a lot of what we what runs off from our communities ends up going into the ocean and blocking some of the light or blocking the ability for the, the coral reef to grow. Um, so thank you all so much in the chat room and your classrooms if you're viewing. Um, we're gonna wrap up our very fast conversation now. Um, now that we've talked a little bit about what's next and how we can do more, which is by spreading awareness, by addressing our own habits, by advocating for larger problematic things to, to stop like dredging or dynamite fishing in communities. Um, and now that we know the value of coral reef and the ocean in our lives, um, I'm just gonna wrap up our conversation. And so I'm going to ask that um, somebody from each school, you're invited to close us out and let us know one final thing that you might wanna hear or that you might want our audience to hear about the ocean before we let them go. Let's start in. Let's start in the Bahamas. Bahamas. What would you like um, your closing words to be? And uh, Therese, maybe you can let us know something that you wish you want everybody to take away from our conversation. I really enjoyed the conversation, and I hope that this helps people to stop um, killing the corals and post more cleanup campaign to the British and the so help the corals from dying. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, let's protect our corals and keep them from dying so they can repopulate and make more and do the things we love them to do. I agree. Let's go to Arizona. Arizona, last words. 
I hope that the conversation that we had today helps people be more aware of the you know day to day things that do affect the ocean. Yeah, in Arizona, we're committed to being aware of our own habits as well, too, now that we know a little more. Yeah, Jalen, what were you gonna say? Oh, no, nothing. Okay, thank you. Okay, now we're gonna um, finally close out. And... I hope from this conversation that we had today that people realize that the ocean affects not just the animals living in the ocean, the ocean itself, but us humans, and even though that some people don't live by the ocean, it still affects how we live. And if we take care of it, we'll be able to enjoy all the things. We'll be able to like enjoy the ocean going to it and all the animals living in it. So I just think we really need to think about what we're doing today so like future can enjoy. Thank you. Absolutely. Very nice. Absolutely. Absolutely. I want to thank you all, everybody in Kansas in Bahamas, in Arizona, for joining us today in our conversation. I wanna thank everyone watching for joining us in our conversation. I hope despite a few technical issues that you were able to hear some of these um, riveting stories about young people and their experience with the ocean and with the coral reef. I invite you to in continue these conversations in your classrooms, wherever you are, however close you are to a body of water, and consider what your habits are and the ways that coral reef is currently benefiting your lives that we don't want to miss out on and that we don't want to go away. If you have not already, I invite you also to create a team and join the challenge, take the challenge and make some beautiful artwork like our teams in the Bahamas to submit it to the Ocean Challenge hosted by Students Rebuild, which is helping to support organizations around the world who are on the ground making change in their local communities as it relates to the ocean. We've got videos on our website, we've got some discussion guides, and we've got some great activities between the Global Nomads Group and the Students We Build website. So we invite you all to explore a little further. And we look forward to seeing you again for our third webcast coming in May. Thank you all again for watching, and I wish you all peace and love and health into the ocean. Bye, everybody. You guys want to wave everybody out? Yay!